Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Greetings to all of you. I might destroy the average age in this hall at the moment, but forgive me for that. I must start off by saying I'm rather envious today. I'm envious about the fact that you guys are young, fiercely motivated. You'll have a lifetime ahead of you. I would give an arm and a leg to be you, but I can't. So let me do what's second best, hang out with you. I'd love to say shoot the breeze, but it's going to be a monologue, I'm afraid, for at least the 10 minutes. But exchange some thoughts, exchange some ideas, and beyond this, you know, if there are any questions outside of this, I'd love to answer. You know, when I started off in life, when I was pretty young, my motive, really, and it continues to be my aspiration and my motive, was very simply to be happy. I just wanted to chase happiness and I still aspire towards chasing happiness and I'd like to believe I've done a reasonably fair job so far of being a happy camper as I love calling it. And today it's a privilege, truly nothing short of a privilege to be able to share some of the things that have struck me and as was said a little earlier, maybe press it down to 10 lessons in approximately 10 minutes, give or take a minute or three. Okay? So, like I said, chasing happiness. What does that mean? I think doing things that bring you joy bring you happiness. That really defines happiness for me. There's never a day at work, I wake up in the morning enthusiastic about what to do. I still think about it like that. So with that as the background, with that as the premise, I'd like to kind of throw, uh, you know, a story to you. You might know who John Lennon of the Beatles was. And you know, when John Lennon was young, five years old, I believe, his mother would always tell him, you know, John, you need to be happy. When you grow up, you need to be happy. And so one day in school, apparently, uh, the teacher put out an assignment to the class and said, I want you to write down what you wish to become when you grow up. And John Lennon wrote, I want to be happy. The teacher looked at the paper and said, John, I don't think you've understood the assignment. And John, I think humbly but clearly said, ma'am, I don't think you've understood life. And it truly is a powerful statement, isn't it? Done by this little kid. You know, John Lennon is one of my favorite philosophers. He also said, Life is what happens to you. Life is what passes you by while you're making those big grandoise plans. And I'll come to that as we go along. So, 10 lessons in 10 minutes. Seems like, yeah, there you go. Let's come to point number one. Go on a discovery. I do hope all of you, without an exception in this room, actually spend time with yourselves what they call me time. Spend time with yourselves figuring out who you are. What they call a SWOT analysis today. Figure out who you are. Figure out what your strengths are. Figure out what your weaknesses are. It's nice to know what your weaknesses are so we can work on them. It's nice to know where the threats are, where the opportunities are. Think about life. Spend time with yourselves. And most importantly, I believe, figure out where your passion lies. Okay? This is probably one of the keys that have helped me in my journey. I can remember loving music. Uh, I started a band when I was really young called Voices, a harmony band. I was very keen on theater. Uh, this stage actually has been home to me, you know, in my growing up years. And uh, I've done a fair bit of theater to say the least. Uh, all this is because I chased my passion. Make time for our passions. I grew up at a time when passions were treated as hobbies. I want you to study for whatever, whatever, and whatever. And if you have the time, then you can indulge in your hobbies. It's something that I didn't agree with, and I'm being polite. I do believe what we call hobbies, or what I'd like to call passion points, need to be pursued. We need to find time. Those passions and the journey pursuing those passions define who we are. I grew up at a time when 
when guys were meant to become engineers and doctors and pilots and all of that. And I was an aviation person, I loved travel and then went on to co-found Fountainhead. And people looked at me and said, event management, what's that? I'll come to that a little later. So, my, my lesson number three is define the terms you want to live life on and then live it. Speaking of Fountainhead, I can clearly remember in the very early 90s when I decided along with a couple of friends to form this company. We had no business background. Uh, we were, I come from this very town of Bandra. Uh, I was reasonably badly behaved, but don't tell anyone about that. And when people said, you're gonna start a company, seriously? You know, what are you on? And I said, I'm on a mission, or we said we're on a mission. Uh, I can remember a couple of corporates very politely, but asking me cynically, event management company, why do we need you guys to do our events? We have an administration department of our own. And I can remember coming back saying, I don't think he's understood who we really are, or maybe we haven't explained to them who we are. So live life, you know, on the terms you want to live it, and then don't look back. Live it. As, as, as a brand one said, just do it. Right? I was chatting with a gentleman back in the day, you know, 30 plus years ago. And he said to me, he said, you've decided, right? I said, yes. He says, go for it and everything else will fall in line. And I so concurred with it at that time. And I so believe in it and propagate it now. Okay. So define the terms. Another thing that really strikes me as important in our lives is to chase positivity. You may agree with me, you may not, but we're surrounded today in a world consumed by negativity, in a world consumed by sensationalism. I mean, you open the newspaper today, I have nothing against newspapers, I still read the newspapers. Or you put the television on and all you're getting bombarded with is negativity and sensationalism. Hey, that's all right. But chase positivity. I always say, you know, I'm, I'm going to share with you, when I was in school, I actually flunked a class. Flunked, and when I do things, I do them well. I flunk badly. You know, if you're failing, you might as well fail properly. And uh, I can remember my dad telling me, you know, why don't you be like so-and-so? He does well in sport. I was a sportsman. And he fares well in academics, and I... I'm told by him, or I was told by him, that politely, I said, I cannot be him because I am me. And secondly, I hope someday you're proud of me. He's somewhere up there in that great big gig in the sky, and I'm hoping he's a bit proud of me. But the point really is that I used that failure, and we should all use. There's no success without failure. And we all make our mistakes, right? But we need to use that failure to never do it again, to understand why we failed and never make that mistake again. I must tell you, to salvage some of my credibility, that six months later I did the same exam and scored a first class, which I am happy to share as well. But <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But the point, the larger point is that failure can do two things to us. It can consume us and we can give up or we can rise above. Okay. And you know exactly which point I want to propagate today. You know, they say the glass is always half full. It's never half empty, unless, of course, it's bottoms up time, but we won't go there. So positivity, chase positivity, okay? A another thing I want to share with you today is being a student, and all of us are, be a student for life. We often sometimes think that you know, the qualifications we wear on our visiting card, you know, our life's learnings are all the learnings we require in life. No! We continue to learn as we go on in life. Be a student for life. I've got umpteen examples. I was passionate about music. I was passionate about theater. I went to festivals all over the world and I learned. I'm not trying to, you know, kind of self-indulge, but I've had the privilege of going to the Atlanta Olympics you know, back in 96, I think it was, I've been to festivals in New Orleans and uh, Woodstock 99 and, and things like that. And I'm saying this for one reason, that I went there because I was hungry to learn. And 
it's, you know, it's something, it's a canvas that we are all, you know, it's available to all of us. We're all exposed to it. So be a student for life and importantly, be a student of life. I do believe, and you may feel free to disagree, but some of my beautiful, most beautiful learnings have come from people that I interact with every day. It could be the rickshaw driver. It could be the house help who comes to maybe clean your home or cook your food. Uh, it could be the security guard you know, of your building or the security guard you meet, the guy who frisks you at the airport. These are all real people. We tend to categorize them. And sometimes if you strike a conversation, and I do that very often, uh, given my lack of language abilities, I struggle a bit. But it's amazing what you can learn from these people. And these stories are not curated. They're honest, real conversations. So I want to propagate that. Of course, as the screen says, stay hungry, and I'm eternally hungry. Uh, while I was you know, co-founding and setting up Fountainhead, I was doing umpteen things like the host for this evening very kindly introduced me. I've been on radio from day one of radio, actually, uh, August 15, 29 years, man. August 15, 93. Man, I'm an old man. <laughs> Thank you. I've been anchoring shows. I still anchor shows. Uh, I'm still doing theater. Recently indulged in Beauty and the Beast, where I was on stage and Sing India Sing. So, you know, I think we need to stay hungry. We need to constantly evolve. We need to constantly have our eyes open for opportunities that could take us, you know, further in our aspirations. Stay hungry. And if you, it's often said he was so lucky he was in the right place at the right time. No, no, it's because he or she was hungry. He or she is constantly thinking of what do I know do next? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I evolve? And so what happens is, you know, in today's parlance, it stores in your hard drive. And when you actually meet someone and there's a bit of conversation happening, you actually put two and two together and say, hey, now's the time to actually talk about this. And you talk about this and, hey, it works. Everyone else is going, oh, she was in the right place at the right time. Yeah, but she was also thinking about this. And so it kind of reached a stage where it happened almost automatically. So stay hungry. Constantly, constantly think about what you can do next. Some people might believe you're punishing yourself. No, you're not. You're actually feeding your happiness quotient. I heard the, the young man before me talk about never let money be your scoreboard. And I want to validate that point. How much money is enough? How much money is enough? You know, I mean, where do you want to live? Is a small home good enough? Is a two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom? I read in this morning's papers about a home purchased for $80 million by, you know, by businessmen in, uh, in Europe, I believe. What's good enough? Is a motorcycle good enough? Is a car good enough? How many cars are good enough? You know, you can redefine and re redefine, right? But the important thing is, don't let money be your scoreboard. Let your aspiration and your dreams of happiness be your scoreboard. I do not wish to debate the fact that money is not important. Money is very important. But money will follow as a consequence of all the other stuff we are talking about today. So if you have your aspirations in place and your, you know, your targets in place by way of what you wish to be and who you wish to be, the rest will fall in line. Of course, you've got to be prudent about finances as well. Know the difference between being passive and going with the flow. You know, people say, hey, take it easy. You know, go with the flow. You know, take it easy, lay back. I agree. You've got to take care of yourself. But that doesn't mean that you're not perceptive or you're not cognizant with the world around you, okay? I do believe the world is changing, and you will know this better than I would, incredibly quickly. What's, the changes happened in the last three years happened probably in the earlier eight to 10 years. And what happened in the earlier eight to 10 years by way of changes probably happened in the previous 50 years. So the speed of change 
is increasing rapidly and we need to be prepped for the future. We need to embrace the future. Uh, I love, you know, I love the previous session for ethical hacking. I love it. It's resonating deeply with me. The world is changing. And we need to be cognizant of those changes, right? Very, very importantly. So understand the difference between being passive and laid back and being cognizant of the world around us. And my 10th point, like I said a little earlier, we all have our aspirations, we all have our tent poles. And I mentioned even earlier at the start of my chat about what John Lennon said, that life is what happens to us while we're planning the big things. You know, chase those aspirations, chase those dreams. But while you're doing that, enjoy the journey. You know, while we are on this, let me draw an analogy. I love, I love traveling cross country by trains, you know, whether it's in the Indian subcon or in Europe, it just kind of throws open, you know, landscapes around you and they, I enjoy it. Even the sound of a chugging train, uh, pardon me, but I love it. I think while we're going on this, you know, journey in this train of life, soak in the vibe around it. I love wildlife, I love going into forests. And sometimes it's not only about chasing that spotting of the tiger or the lion, it's about actually appreciating the sights and sounds in the forest around us. Enjoy that journey, okay? The destination, like I said a little earlier, sometimes will change. You know, you might change your aspirations a little bit, the end aspirations. But the journey is really what life is about. Life is a journey, it's not a destination. And I want to end by saying you guys are placed in prime position to enjoy the journey. You are at the starting blocks of thereabouts of life. So I'm going to leave you with that thought. Enjoy the journey immensely. Whatever else has to happen will happen. The universe will conspire. Okay? Thank you very much for having me here this afternoon. <laughs>